Welcome everybody back to Boost in Motion and today I want to talk about map 6 on the JB4 for the Q50 model. Now two things that you guys can do for me and ladies, please click the like, subscribe and or bell button please. I want to get more subscribers to this channel so I can bring more content out and I want to raffle something off that 500 subscribers. Please guys get them likes up, subscribe. Second thing. As a disclaimer, I'm only going to give you my personal opinion and and how to tune on map six. So I'm not nowhere near responsible if you make a mistake and mess your car up. I'm only telling you what works for me and what I've learned so far. Let's get into it. So once you load up your JB4, connect it through Bluetooth, whatever the case might be. Same thing if some of you people may use the, the, the actual plugin, but hopefully this is really just for the Bluetooth models. Go to display. You're going to press the map on the bottom far right. And when you press on the bottom far right map, it's going to show you the different maps you can choose. You're going to click on map six. Now, map six is pretty much where you can make changes to the amount of boost that you're running. You're going to go to settings to the far right. You're going to go to JB4 settings. You're going to go to user adjustment. User adjustment is when you make the changes to the amount of PSI you're running or the amount of boost you're running. Now, when you get to this first screen, you're going to see RPMs to the left from 1500 to 7000. And to the right, you're going to see two other fuel columns. We're not going to pay those attention. We're not going to pay attention to fuel biases. We're not going to pay attention to duty. I want you guys to keep your eye on map six. We're not going to pay attention to the bottom row either. Um, we're not going to pay attention to stuff because this deals with other maps such as map um, three. We're going to stick with just this left column, map six boost. Now, whenever you are in map six, you select the max sips and you come to user adjustment. This These adjustments doesn't apply to any other map, only map six and map six only. Cool. Now, next thing. All right. Now you see that the, I have these different numbers from seven to eight to nine uh, point oh. That is the amount of boost or PSI you're running. Now, that doesn't mean that the car is running seven PSI. No. This number means that if you're at 1,500 RPM, right, that seven pounds of boost is on top of whatever the ECU sends. Do you get it? Let me re-say it. Let's say the ECU wants four PSI at 1,500 RPM. The JB4 hacks that signal and adds seven pounds on top of the four pounds. Do you get it? Four plus seven is 11 pounds. Okay, so I hope I explain that as well as I can. Now, from what I've been reading online, MB, MB4 Fanatics, this looks Google Q50, MB04 Fanatics. Um, from what I've been seeing is uh, when at lower RPM, you want to put at least three, four, five above stock. And the middle RPMs, like from three to like five to six, you put like uh, from five to seven. Now, you guys probably asking, why am I running nine? Because I am data logging. What is data logging? Well, when you get the JB4 with the Bluetooth and everything, don't get the JB1, the JB4, you can data log a lot of information when it comes from the parameters of the car. For instance, you are, I'm going to show you an example. I'm going to go to exports. I'm going to go to this data log. Let's just pick this one for instance. You can pull it up based on a graph. And you can choose the different parameters that you want to look at. You see, guys? Ignition, fuel trims, meth, gear, all that stuff. You can pull this oil temp. This is what will show up on the graph if you choose to use the graph. Or if you don't want to use the graph, you can use the C the CSV viewer. That's going to show you, for instance, same thing, RPMs, ECU, PSI, boost, and pedal, and everything like that. Now... This is what I use a lot when I data log. For instance, let me just teach y'all briefly on it. Now you see the part where it says RPM, right? Right there, RPM to the top left. Now let's move down to when I usually press the pedal all the way down. Okay, so you see the pedal is the fifth column to the right. When you hit about a 108 or 100 pedal, that means that you pretty much floored it. You press the pedal all the way down. Now, if you look at the third column, target, Target is those boost numbers that I put. Remember those nines? Those are the nines there. See? And if you look to the left, look at 2400 RPM. You see how it says 2.6? That's your ECU PSI. That's at what? how much 
the ECU it wants to send out at that RPM based on me flooring it. Right now that I'm pretty much floored it, so the readings aren't going to be consistent. They're going to be all over the place. So let me try to find you a better uh, a better example. I'm going to move down to about about here. Right around 57, 57 harp, 100 RPM. The engine is calling for 7 PSI of boost. The My uh, target is 9.0, remember. Now you see this number 13 to the right. 13 is the addition. That's what the computer is reading. The computer itself, the not the JB4, the car itself is reading that amount of PSI. Now you guys are probably sitting and saying, well, 7 plus 9 is 16 and you're only at 13. I'm just giving you guys to let you know that the car was scrambling. I floored it. You're going through the gearing really quickly. That's why when you data log, you should always data log in third or fourth gear because these numbers will be more consistent and won't be scrambling right now. I did this pull in, I think, a second, first to set, uh, second to even third gear. So the numbers aren't going to be consistent. They're going to be all over the place. So you may see the 6.5 plus 8.2 brings, brings 11. So the car is not going to be... It's going to be fluctuating. The next thing you guys are probably going to ask is, well, if you're doing 7 plus 9 and you're only pulling 13, isn't the car running? The car isn't running properly? No, the car is running properly because the car has specific fuel trims that it learns from itself. And with the JB4, from what I'm noticing, it's keeping a lot of the fuel ratios or the AFR, the air fuel ratios, more on the rich side, which is great for protecting the engine and keeping exhaust temperatures down, but you don't want it too rich because it fouls up your catalytic converters. You never want a lean condition where the numbers will be too high, and you, you would never want that. Um, let me see if I could try to find you a better data log just to give you a bit more information on it because I know you guys, I love information. I really want to help you guys because I had to learn this stuff on my own. This one's a terrible data log. Um, let me see this one. Just hear me out. Thank you guys for still following the channel. If you're still watching, if you forgot to subscribe, just subscribe, please. You know, I really want to make a lot of videos. I want to really want to grow this channel. I really want our Infinities to be out here chasing down M4s and other fast V6 twin turbo cars or inline six turbo cars, man. We got to do it. We got to put our cars on the map. Nissan is finally putting competition out here for regular cars. All right. This is a great example, okay? Good example. So in this case, I think, I believe I did a third gear pull here. And if you start off at this one, at 5,000 RPM, the car was calling for 7 PSI. And then I was I was calling for 9, and we only got 11. But the numbers got a lot better later because I was a third gear pull. So now it's not running through the gears. It's actually rising slowly. So now look down, you can see here, now at 5,400 RPM, I have 8.4 plus nine. That's about 16. And then if you even go even farther, at 5,700, the, the ECU is calling for 11 PSI, and I'm calling for nine. So I got to almost to that achieved 19.6. I had 19 pounds, and I remember this. This car was hauling, I'm telling you, hauling. And even at this, when the car ended up to shift shifting. I think this is the fourth gear. And I got 12 PSI from calling from the ECU. And I got nine. And that's how I achieved 22 pounds of boost. Now, people may say, but hey, 22 pounds isn't safe. Once again, that's pretty much the most optimized uh, amount of PSI for these turbos. If these turbos max out somewhere around 22 to 25 pounds and the efficiency goes down. But at these low RPM, this is great. The amount of torque I probably got was astounding. And... When you want to look at the scale, let me press it back. You can go to the graph for this one. Let's look at the graph briefly. Now, if you look at the graph briefly, the, the green is the RPM. That's me flooring it in uh, the third gear, I believe. Now, if you look at the white line, I don't think you can see it. It's a white line. That's the ECU P uh, PSI. And that's how much, um, that is how much, uh, um, um, pounds the ECU was calling for, right? And the blue lines are my targets and my achieved. So I, I was targeting a certain amount of boost over stock, and I was actually achieving it. And you see how the boost was actually increasing? 
with the amount of RPM too. But then you see that the green line drops down. That's when my gear changes and it starts to come back up. But I started to let off the gas at that point. Now, I briefly want to tell you guys something else before I close, finish and close this video. Please um, leave any comments under that anything that you may be confused about. But you see that, say, that thing that says AFR? That's your air fuel ratio. And if you look at the numbers on the right, they are from 0 to 50. You really necessarily want your air fuel ratio to be somewhere between 12 and 14. That's usually a room on the rich, perfect side. That protects the engine from overheating and burning out calluses converters and never going in or knocking. It's a really good way to have your car running like that. So if you look at that yellow line, it start off at about a little under 15. And notice while I'm flooring it, while RPM is going up, the, the AFR is going a little bit lower. So it's running like 13. So it's on a rich side. And if you look all the way across, at, a, at one point it got really rich at about 10. If you look to the right, about 10, but that was when I let off the gas because you can see the RPMs are dropping. Also, you can see that the e the PSI calling from the engine is dropping and all the other numbers are dropping because I'm letting off. So remember, AFR is very important because you want to make sure you're running a bit on a rich side when you're flooring it, when you add this amount of PSI. Also, you want to look at how much boost you're running and the RPM range. And based on what I'm looking at here, um, I'm, I was pushing almost 22 pounds at a point 22 pounds you see the spike with the blue number 22 pounds and but that's also when the car shifted gears and also when the car shifted gears too so that could be something with the wastegate also but i remember it the car was amazing but anyway i hope guys i hope this uh kind of gave you a best type of like um range on like how to tune with map six and how to be careful with map six. Oh, lastly uh compare map six to map seven from what i learned um let me go back to map seven. Uh, from what I've learned from looking, comparing on um, map seven and map six, map seven, the lower RPMs are somewhere around five PSI overstock, and it goes to about six to seven, and then they taper off at the high RPM from like six to five. So knowing that, that amount of PSI, I started messing with it a little bit to go a little higher and find my own sweet spot. So I'll make another video about the, the changes and the effects it had on the car and um, what I learned. But uh, thanks again, everybody, for following the channel. Please like, share, subscribe, comment below. I'll, I'll do my best to try to answer questions from what I know. If not, subscribe to nb4fanatics.com. There's a big, huge thread of over 100, like 100 threads on just learning the JB4 because this is a fairly, fairly new to the Q50 platform. So they're literally... Great JB4, they've been around with BMWs, but now they, they're testing it out in Infinities, and I really want them to keep doing good and doing great things. Thank you.